The purpose of this video is to understand the reason why Mises stress is this expression. If you use this function called Mises stress, you can come to know whether a material will yield or not, but why? In my previous video, I introduced that whether the material will yield or not doesn't depend on coordinate systems. It would be unbelievable if the material yielded under this coordinate system, but the material didn't yield under this coordinate system, right? So, firstly, let's find a function that doesn't depend on coordinate systems. Have you heard of principal stress? I will introduce it. Let's say you have this stress tensor under this coordinate system. If you choose a coordinate system carefully, you can find a coordinate system whose stress tensor becomes this stress tensor. It has no shear stresses. This is a principal stress. The important thing now is that a principal stress doesn't depend on coordinate systems. I will add more explanation. Please keep it in mind that this one prime coordinate system gives this principal stress, okay? And you had this stress tensor. Now I have a question. Can you describe the principal stress without specifying a coordinate system? Yes, you can, because the principal stress has already existed. This one prime coordinate system gives the principal stress. Okay? Let's say you have this two prime coordinate system. I have a question again. Can you describe the principal stress without specifying a coordinate system? Yes, you can. Again, because the principal stress has already existed. This one prime coordinate system gives the principal stress. What I'd like to say is that a principal stress doesn't depend on coordinate systems. If there is a material, the material always has its principal stress automatically. Let's go back to the main topic. You have a stress tensor, and we are trying to find a function that doesn't depend on coordinate systems. The key factor is the principal stress. But how can we get the principal stress? We can get it if we solve this equation. If you would like to know the reason, you can read a book about linear algebra. If you are not interested in the reason, please just accept that you can get the principal stress if you solve this cubic equation with respect to lambda. This is the expansion of this equation. These are the solutions. Remember, we are trying to solve this equation to find these values, right? So, these are the solutions for this equation. Therefore, this equation is true. We can combine these equations and then we can get this equation. If you compare the coefficients of squared lambda, you can get this equation, and you can get these equations in the same way. These functions are all invariant. I mean, the values of these functions do not depend on coordinate systems, because these functions are all invariant, as you have already known. Now, you should think about these functions, because we have this stress tensor. We can substitute this stress tensor 
into these functions. We don't have this tensor, therefore, these functions are meaningless. So, I will erase everything except for these functions. Okay, now our question is which function is the most appropriate to evaluate whether a material will yield or not? In order to find the most appropriate one, Mr. Mises added two conditions. One of these is hydrostatic stress doesn't matter, which means in this case, even though the sigma was big value, these stresses don't control whether the material will yield or not. I think I need to add more explanation. Let's say the yield point of this material is 300 megapascals. If I sink it into the deep sea, what will be the yield point? Will it be 300 megapascals again? Yes, it will. And it can be applied to isotropic tensile stress. If you don't think so, you must not use Mises stress. There may be some materials that don't meet this condition. But they say that most metal materials meet this condition. But why? This is metal atomic structure. And normally, it has defects called dislocation. A dislocation is expressed as this symbol. If a dislocation moves like this, deformation occurs. What if this kind of forces, I mean isotropic forces, are applied to the material. Since this metallic bond is super strong, the bond will not break. And as you can imagine, the forces don't seem to move the dislocation. The forces are not pushing or pulling the dislocation, right? Since the dislocation cannot move, the material will not deform. That's why Mises added this condition. Okay? And what will happen if we accept this condition? You have already had this stress tensor. Now you should subtract this hydrostatic stress from the stress tensor. I will give you the reason. Let's say these stresses are very big value, like about 10,000 megapascals. Since you have already subtracted this stress, which is this, the stress tensor is not affected by the big hydrostatic stress. For example, 1010 minus 1018 equals to minus only 8 right? The stress tensor is hardly affected. Now we understand this stress tensor meets this condition. So let's substitute this stress tensor into this function. And then we will get this new function. I will organize the function a little. If you substitute this into this, you will come to know that this function equals to zero. Now we know it's useless to think about this function because it will always become zero. I will erase the function. Next, let's substitute this stress tensor again into this function. We will get this function. Do you remember something? It looks like Mises stress, but something is different. Let me leave it for now. I will move on to the second condition, which is compressive stress and tensile stress don't matter. I mean, if this material yields 
with a tensile stress of sigma y, the same material will yield with a compressive stress of minus sigma y. If you don't think so, you must not use Mises stress. Okay. If we accept this condition, what will happen? This function meets this second condition, right? Because all the variables are squared. So, minus will be cancelled. However, how about this function? Minus cannot be cancelled. Which means this function does not meet this second condition. I will erase this function. Now, we only have this function. But how can we use the function? The function that can evaluate whether a material will yield or not. Here is a material, and it yields with stress of sigma y. We can easily get this value of many materials in textbooks or on internet as well. Let's substitute this stress tensor into this function. Sigma x is sigma y, and the other components are zero. And then we can get this. The important thing is that if this value becomes bigger than this value, the material will yield. I will organize this math expression a little. I get this math expression. This is Mises stress. If you would like to know whether a material will yield or not, you can substitute a stress tensor into this function. And if the value of this function reaches sigma y, the material will yield. This is the theory of Mises stress.